Doesn't fancy you. Dude, you never review any CRKT knives. Oh, yeah, here's one. This is a CRKT. By the way, that stands for Columbia River Knife and Tool M4. And I like it. Believe it or not, I really like it. Now, surprisingly, and some of you guys have been watching my videos along, may be surprised that I do like it because it's not a super lightweight knife. 5.2 ounces on the M4. And some of you guys will be going, dude, it's over your 4 ounce limit. Well, remember, I'll go over the 4 ounce limit if I feel I get something in return for that. Um, now, that doesn't mean that's the knife I'm going to be carrying all the time. The hardest thing about owning several different options is trying to choose. What am I going to carry today? What am I going to carry in, in this situation? It's a great problem to have. Don't get me wrong. I love it. But sometimes the extra weight will be needed. Where does the extra weight come from in the M4? The Carson designed M4 by Columbia River Knife and Tool. Well, first, it's mostly a stainless steel frame. The bolsters here are made out of stainless steel, non-ventilated. You can see they're relatively thick. That's where a lot of that weight's coming from. Additionally, it has it's fully stainless steel lined. Let me get my flashlight. Oh, you don't need a flashlight. You can see it in there. Those are stainless steel liners in there. Not skeletonized. Shame on you, CRKT. Those should, just like Spyderco, often bench made. Dudes, drill that out. How hard is that? You're not going to lose anything in strength as we go inside of here and drill and remove that material. And yeah, would it lighten it that much? Well, half an ounce. Yeah, I'll take it. You bet I'll take it without losing it any durability. No problem. However, the weight serves a purpose, in my opinion, in the M4. And that purpose is to make it stronger. And this is indeed... In my opinion, again, that's all it is, is me giving you a data point on the M4 Carson, is this is a strong knife. It's a, in what category, what POU am I going to use on this? I'll say it's primarily a folding tactical knife. Secondarily, EDC option, everyday carry utility knife. Those are the two categories you could put this knife into and the uses you could use a knife for. Now the strength, and I'm going to talk, I'll talk about the blade and the other specifics here in a second. The strength I'm talking about is part of those stainless steel bolsters. That's going to prevent any torsional flex around the pivot area to a point as I flex side to side, which by the way, the Carson locks up like a bank vault. There is no play whatsoever, and I never ever had to even adjust the pivot screw. My pointer today, by the way, is another CRKT model. I'll review, review it, the Drifter. And nice pivot screw, by the way, just a standard Torx bit that I can adjust it should I need to. So that's one reason why it's strong. Stainless steel bolsters. Yes, it's got stainless steel liners, but also it has what Columbia River Knife and Tool refers to as an auto lock. And it's not L-O-C-K, it's L-A-W-K. Dog dog's barking down there, sorry. <clears throat> um... And what this is, is this is the auto lock right here. It's a very, it's a spring-loaded mechanism. Allie, no bark! It's a spring-loaded mechanism right here that when I deploy the knife blade and put it in the deployed position, watch how that will slide forward on its own. And it prevents the closure of the blade. Even... That actually prevents your liner lock from ever coming to the left there and actuating, as long as that's engaged, theoretically. I mean, could you make this to fail? Well, maybe some guys could. But overall, that's a strong system. And it, in a way, is a pseudo-fixed blade. Now, I'll say pseudo because it's never going to be strong, strong as a regular fixed blade. That's because this is not a continuous piece of steel. The blade ends right here doesn't go in the handle like a fixed blade does. Fixed blades are going to be stronger because they're fixed blades. It's a single slab of steel, assuming you have a full tang knife. But maybe it approaches towards the strength level of a fixed blade knife. So some of my subscribers have emailed me or PM me and said, hey dude, what's a really strong folder knife? Well, maybe this is what you're looking for. It is something that's stainless steel bolstered, nice liners, auto lock. Now, that auto lock system, by the way, heads up, it's not super easy to disengage because you're going to have to multitask. Now, if you're chewing gum, you might want to spit it out if you can't multitask well. Because what you're going to do 
is I use my index finger to retract the lock mechanism, again spring loaded, and then I'll push that liner lock to the left and using a second hand, close it. And yeah, I need two hands to do that. Maybe I'm just not skilled enough, but maybe some of you guys can use one hand. But two hands is kind of the name of the game to close that auto lock. Because as soon as you let go of that lock mechanism, it re-engages. So you're going to have to keep that retracted, close your liner like so. No big deal. It's actually pretty quick. And you know what? I'm more concerned about how fast the knife comes out than I am how fast I can close it. Because when I have need that knife out in a tactical, emergency, defensive situation, those words are synonymous to me, by the way, I want my blade out quick. And I'm generally going to be under stress when I need it. I need it to deploy fast, lock tight, and heaven forbid I make a thrust cut and miss and I hit a wall or something, I don't want my knife to, to fold on me. And I think the M4, the Carson M4, might be that style of knife where it's not going to fold as much. Interesting. I like it. How the blade itself is made of OS 8 steel. I can't really speak to how I haven't used the knife yet. So I can't tell you how, how durable it is, how tough it is, what the heat treatment's like. Three and a half inches long is the blade. So that's very much in par with category. That's standard for the size. Uh, let's compare it against the CQC8 Emerson. And you can see the Emerson has just a little bit more reach. I'm just using this because it was handy, by the way. Um, a little bit more reach. By the way, these knives weigh exactly the same weight, 5.2 ounces. So, interesting. Yeah, if I'm going, heaven forbid, oh, this is all I have to defend myself, but if I had to choose between the two in a knife fight, again, heaven forbid. I'm serious on that, by the way. I'd probably go CQC8. Uh, I love that deep choil. It's just nice, fast. But the M4 Carson is no slouch either. Let's talk about... Uh, again, the blade, it's hollow ground. Again, we can detect the hollow grinding by just pinching our thumb and our forefinger together, and you can kind of see, feel how that blade indents and then flares out as we get towards the relief edge. Bead blasted Osate steel. I think the steel will be adequate for the pur purpose. I, If it is like most Osate steels that I've used, and by Os, I mean AUS, however you want to say it, um, I, I think it will be adequate. Good edge holding, relatively good rust resistance. It's a good-looking blade. Kind of a uh, drop point clip blade. I'm generally more of a fan of the full on Bowie style blades, but you know what? This blade shape is fine. There's your Im imprinting on the blade. Very nice. Got your patents, Carson designed. Nice thumb studs too, knurled, ambidextrous, and so if you're a lefty, you're set already. You don't have to reverse it. I find good traction on the thumb stud too for deployment purposes. Some guys will go, dude, why do you even talk about the thumb stud? Well, who cares? Well, actually, I think it's an attention to detail that's very important. I've carried enough knives to know that the thumb stud, if it's slick or hard to get a hold of, it just it's going to slow you down and getting the blade out, generally speaking. But the blade itself, finishing the blade, is adequately long. I would like to see a 4-inch version come out. And I think it would, the blade itself would be good for both slash cuts. And also, let's just talk about utility. I think it's an excellent utility blade. That it would serve quite well in EDC rolls. Enough said. How's the handle? We already talked about the bolsters. And yes, that's part of the package you get in the M4. The handles are that Zytel material. I would love to see G10 here. I mean, at this price point, and the price point I'm going to say is around, around, I don't know. 55 to 70, depending where you get it. They should have G10 here. I don't know why CRKT just loves using Zytel, but they do. And I'll use Zytel or FRN pretty much interchangeably. It's, to me, it's basically the same purpose type material. It's a plastic. And they should have textured it better. These are smooth. And I'm thinking, I think they're looking for a specific look, Carson was. And I know this is based on a custom that he made for a long time. But I would like to see that textured somehow for grip but not too bad overall not a flow through design pillar construction in other words if we have a backspacer right here Zytel not a big deal though um, you can take the knife apart like I've sp spoken to many of my other videos I do like that option if we need to clean it get salt water out of it torque screws will do the job for you here's a criticism and valid why don't you make the clip reversible dudes CRKT, Carson, Kit Carson. Dude, seriously, 
You should make it so we can attach it on this end at the bare minimum. Seriously. Because now, I don't know why CRKT, they just demand that we carry our blades tip down. I guess they're afraid we're going to get hurt. And I'm not a fan of tip down carry. I know your mileage may vary. There's a lot of advocates that love tip down. I, let's not get into that. It's just really not important. But what is important is giving your consumers options. Especially at this price level. What you should do is make it reversible. So the guys have the choice. And definitely it's not reversible right to left. And I can forgive that, but I'd really like to see them drill this out. Could I do it? Eh, I don't know. I'd have to take this clip off, orient it, and see how it would run along the side of that handle and how it would look. Um, speaking of looks, by the way, the M4 Carson is a very good-looking knife. I like the looks of it. It's handsome. It's fast. By the, I think I already spoke to the lockup. Very tight, no wiggle at all. And it is very fast. It's a good-looking knife didn't speak about that there's your there's your thumb ramp here made out of the liners the liners kind of protrude and what do you know they actually have some functional jimping on it more or less I think it could be just a little bit sharper but not bad and will it function to prevent your hand coming forward on a thrust attack uh, debatable no really finger guard on the bottom at all you know you have a little bit of jimping right there on the liner but that's not really functional for that purpose. So it is a little bit slick and a little bit guardless and along those lines. But take it for what it is. But overall, good looking knife. I suspect it's going to be a very strong knife. <clears throat> a little bit on the heavy side. But I like it. I like it for the strength, the looks, good blade shape, adequate reach, good speed, solid lockup. I think it's a great knife, the M4 Carson. If you're looking for a folding tactical, maybe EDC blade that is impressive along the lines I just mentioned, this might be your knife. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the good ratings. As usual, keep them coming. I'll keep the videos coming. Peace. Nothing fancy.